This is Craig Siegel. Just got off the Resilient Minds podcast with my man, Eric Balance, talking all things quantum energy, how to handle the ego and add this flashlight and so forth. Such an unbelievable conversation. Can't wait for the world to hear it. Hey, everybody. It's Eric Balance coming to you with the Resilient Minds podcast, where I feature beautiful entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and experts in their field where they help us discover their X factor, their experience of life, only to discover how they were able to accomplish and find out their Y factor, their big Y, their purpose in life. So join me as we get to discover the beauty of our minds and how can we really continue to go after the biggest and most wildest dreams while we continue to pursue and manifest our greatest intelligence that comes from the heart. Also, if you haven't, go check out the new alignment course that I've created at www.ericbalance.com forward slash alignment, A-L-I-G-N-M-E-N-T. See you on the show. Welcome to the Resilient Minds podcast. I am super grateful, excited to be here with a new and amazing dear friend, Craig Siegel. Am I pronouncing that all right? Honestly, brother, you couldn't have said it better. <laughs> ah, beautiful. Amazing, amazing, man. So, Craig, man, uh, first of all, thank you for coming on the show. I'm, I'm extremely excited to just dive deeper in what your, you know, last 12, 18 months have looked like. Because I know, you know, since COVID hit, uh, you've been like, you know, really bringing magic to the world. And I'm really excited to know more about how that's looked like. But, you know, going from these inner deeper experiences, I always share the most important thing when it comes to our experiences is really how they contribute to our biggest why. And so, you know, I know, you know, we talk about uh, how we flourish from, you know, I, I've been in corporates, you know, I know you worked in Wall Street and really just discovering kind of ourselves through this. Um, yeah, like, I think it's more of an expression. So before we get started, first of all, again, thank you. And second of all, please, uh, you know, let us know, you know, what's been some of these key developments of, of your growth and what it is that, you know, today makes you so vibrant in the world, because you really are, brother, you're really doing some beautiful things. So first, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for saying that, brother. It really means a lot. I, I'm going to go ahead and receive all that. And it's funny because everyone always asks me, like, how are you always so happy? How are you so excited? Like, what are you on, right? But the truth of the matter is, is that I spent 35 years of my life looking for my true identity, right? And like really trying to find myself. And it wasn't only until the pandemic. And I can give a little background about how we got here. But now that I'm really living inside my vision, my most true, authentic self, like, I love this stuff, brother, like personal development, studying the mind, helping people break out of their shell and, and fulfill their potential and expand their capacity and collaborate with amazing people, celebrities, having this conversation with you right now. Like I get to do this. I don't have to, brother. Like I love this stuff. And, and just to give a quick background, like I was on Wall Street for the last 10, 11 years very lucrative. And I say very humbly, I was in finance and I started my own business. But as it turns out, making money doesn't necessarily equal success. And I, I was straight up miserable. And I'm sure maybe you can relate to this. If it felt like I was waking up every single day and going to a job, and that's not what life's supposed to be about. And so I had all this built up energy and fuel, I didn't know what to do. I was a business owner. So I channeled it and I started running a bunch of marathons, which was cool. And running is still a big part of my life, but I was never going to be a professional runner. It was just an outlet or an arena to be a gladiator, so to speak. Then, fast Love. forward, the, yeah, hell yeah, the pandemic happens, yeah. right? And I saw a lot of people doing a lot of Netflix and a lot of day drinking. I said, that's not going to be me. I closed down my office for what I thought would be two weeks back last March. Who knew? And I just put myself in this frequency. I'm like, I know I'm meant for more in this life to make an impact, to serve, to leave a dent in the universe. And so, from studying all the NLP, the law of attraction, and all of that great personal development stuff, I had built up skills. And so I had this strategy, simply put, what are my gifts? What are my passions? My gifts, hopefully you and your audience will agree, is my ability to elevate, to inspire, to help people actually want to take inspired action. 
So that's my gift. Now, what's my passion? Simply put, personal development, mindset, removing limiting beliefs, all that stuff. I'm obsessed with it. So I, I married the two, my ability to communicate, my passion, personal development. I started my CLS brand in the beginning of the pandemic, and I very humbly say it's exploded. One of the top podcasts on the planet, keynote speaking on major companies. We just spoke up on a fiber, $7 billion company, masterminds, coaching, all that stuff, my membership. But to answer your question, to come full circle, how am I so vibrant right now? It's because I absolutely love this stuff. It's not work to me. The truth of the matter is, is if I had a billion dollars in the bank, which I don't yet, I'd still be doing exactly what I'm doing right now, more specifically, having this great conversation with you. I love it, brother, man. Uh, and it, it's good. I can feel the vibe. I can feel the energy. And, and, you know, like to me, the biggest thing is really at the end of the day, feeling each other, because I think at the end of the day, human connection is really what we all seek. Right. And so I love it because I can really feel this vibrant energy coming out, coming, coming off of you. You know, <laughs> like it's so beautiful because we end up being these beautiful mirrors for one another and having this conversation, you know, I'm really excited to know a little bit more. So Tell me about CLS because CLS, um, I don't know what it stands. I mean, I know what it stands for, but the, whoever's listening doesn't know what it stands for. And so I think that it'd be nice for, for you to just dive a little bit deeper into the dynamics of CLS and how this has been such a, like maybe some key experiences that helped you understand that this is the reason or the reasons that you wanted to like really go into this personal development uh, stuff, you know, maybe there's something that was a breaking point, you know, in, in developing it. Yeah. So CLS stands for cultivate lasting symphony. It also may or may not be a play on my initials, Craig Landon Siegel. Let me just, you know, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'll let me be honest <laughs> with you. I'm a strange cat. I'm weird. So the word symphony always stuck out to me for some reason. I just liked it. It, it. it felt like good to me. The word symphony to me, I just picture like an orchestra, like all in tempo or everyone playing together. And when I was going to start my brand, when I had that breakthrough that this is what I want to do, I don't want to just be inspirational because anybody can watch a Rocky movie, go to the gym on New Year's, right? And then the gyms are empty two weeks later. So inspiration is temporary. I wanted to change mindsets for life. So that's how I thought of Cultivate Lasting Symphony or, or CLS, a play on my initials. Literally, when I started this, when I had the idea out the very next day on a run, it came to me. I do some of my best brainstorming on a run, pulled over in Central Park and rushed to GoDaddy.com to buy the domain, which I probably didn't have to rush for. I don't know if anyone was Jones. <laughs> I know. You're like, oh, my God, hold on. You know, yeah. I have this idea. Fuck, everybody's got to think. <laughs> you know, that's like, right. oh, my God, somebody's going to catch it. You know? Yes, exactly. So. That's really it on how the name came about. And then some of the experiences, by the way, I've just been so unfulfilled um, for so long. And I just know that I'm not the only one that suffered from unfulfillment or unhappiness or no clarity or even maybe depression, for lack of better words. And then I realized, like, it's just thoughts, right? Because thoughts are random. Thinking is not. We all get negative thoughts over the course of the day. People just aren't typically aware enough to understand that we weren't born with these beliefs, right? Limiting beliefs, so forth. So as long as we know that, we can get rid of the disempowering thoughts in our head, literally like an intruder in your house, like get out and replace them with more empowering, positive, constructive thoughts with change our beliefs and so forth. And I've been through that. I'm empathetic to people that aren't super happy right now. And now I'm on the other side doing what sets my soul on fire. And the irony is, is I didn't start CLS for the money, right? And I say very humbly, I was making money on Wall Street. But as it turns out, when you really find alignment and you're doing what sets your soul on fire and you do a good job at it, the money comes, right? So now I'm making more money than I made on Wall Street. I sold my business. But the bottom line is, is I know what it feels like to be, to struggle and, and to not know your purpose, your identity and so forth. And I just want to help everybody. Like everyone's like, how many people? A billion? Literally, I want to help everybody that I possibly can feel inspired to take action and live the life that they desire. So this is really something you mentioned something really beautiful, um, focusing on mindset and yep. mindset to me has become uh, really like, um, um, how do you say, it? like very logical perspective. And I really get um, this a lot because I think it's important. And I, I really have noticed through my own journey that 
the less I let go of, like the more I let go of the component of mindset, I've really started tapping into the heart set. And for me, this has become like such a, such a catabolizing word to really identifying that, hey, it's like the limiting beliefs, everything that has come from my mind or my brain. <laughs> and people are like, Eric, what do you think? I'm like, listen, I try not to think anymore. <laughs> you know, like the, 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 the less I think, the more I'm in this vibration of trusting. And so how do you feel about really tapping more into this like heartfelt energetic intelligence so that we're more able to like allow kind of life or, or nature or spirit to guide us? How do you feel about that? Yeah, I agree with you, brother. And it's so interesting because I was always a mindset guy and straight up, I was always skeptical like the spirituality stuff because you know, I was a little stubborn. I was like, if I can't see it, if it's beyond my senses, how can I buy into it? And it wasn't until recently I went on a spiritual journey about three months ago. I was getting ready to run the marathon and I was at a big speaking engagement and I got injured when I was playing football with the boys on the beach, came home yeah. and it was misdiagnosed as a sprained ligament. Turns out there was a tumor in my foot, which was crazy. Wow. Yeah. It came out of nowhere. And so I think a long story short, I gave myself a a day of a pity party. And then I got it taken care of. I went to the best doctors Manhattan has to offer. And I got the surgery out, got the tumor out, came back benign, thank God. But I had cr crutches, stitches, an Achilles issue, the whole nine. Um, but I learned a great valuable lesson during this process because that's when I started to buy in to the quantum field and all this energy stuff and understand that this is just a vessel here talking to you, just a body that holds my soul and my spirit. And I started to really buy in and understand frequencies and vibrations and the law of attraction. And I can't talk about this stuff enough. And let me be clear, like, it's still new to me. But now I look back, I'm like, all that mindset stuff, like you just attested to, like, that was just the appetizer. All this quantum, this energy stuff, this is where the magic happens, brother. This is where the real life manifestations happen in real time. And so I didn't even have the opportunity to train physically, but an opportunity presented itself to run the New York City Marathon couple of weeks ago. Um, I did it to honor my pops who's currently battling cancer and also to raise money for American Cancer Society. And it wasn't about me, right? I didn't run the race for Craig. I ran it for a bigger reason. I was just grateful to get to the start line because um, I didn't have physical training. You know, typically for 26.2 miles, you need that. But I had all this quantum stuff and this energy stuff. And, and I, didn't, I didn't make any predictions. I just felt good. I felt the line. I mm. love this energy stuff. Make a long story short, we ended up dominating. We ran the fastest I ever ran in my life. We crushed it. I honored my pops. And it was such a special experience. But although that journey ended from the tumor to being able to run the New York City Marathon, the real journey now begins with all this quantum yeah. stuff, the vibrations, the frequencies. I love this stuff, brother. And you could probably teach me a thing or two about it because I'm still new to it. I mean, we're all still learning from each other. And you know, man, the more I realize that I... Uh... I realize I don't know shit, you know? <laughs> so like, it's all good. And uh, at the end of the day, like, you know, I am just the student of life and, and uh, you know, we're, we're here to, to teach and learn from each other. And the most beautiful thing is like the best teachers have always been students and the best students have always been teachers. And this is what I'm really grateful about because I learn, you know, like doing these shows, doing the, these podcasts, you know, being able to sit here. I learned from every human experience I have because when we can have enough compassion to ourselves, you know, we can actually go into any conversation and, and be curious, be the child, you know, be the innocent boy that is like, hey, okay, you know what? Like, you're right. I didn't even think of that perspective and I, I haven't even been sensitive enough to it. And, you know, one thing I really like, as you, you're, you're telling your story is like, wow, you like the first thing that came to me is like, you sprayed that. So that tumor showed itself, you know, it, it was like, it was like, it was, this is, this is how powerful uh, the universe really, you know, God creator, whatever you want to call is it like it, everything it, that that's happening is happening for us not to us right because people can become in this like place of victimhood of blaming you Most know it, it, and, and here's the thing is like we were all there you know like it, it's okay you know like i was there 
You know, I was in this place of victimhood. I, I was in this place of, of uncertainty, of fear, of scared. You know, what's going on with like, you know, this, the, the COVID situation, all of this thing is, is really, it, it's a, it's a fear, right? It's and ultimately a fear of death. And so if we can say, Hey, like, you know, I get it. I totally fucking get it. Like I was there. I, I, I really didn't know how to let go of it. And you know, the deeper I go, the higher the, you know, it's like that, that, that quote, you know, the deeper your, your roots go, the higher your, your branches can go. And to me, that's been the most interesting capacity or understanding in my life has been came okay, like every person, literally every person I meet is a teacher. And just being like super curious to what their perspective, because realistically, if we believe in this quantum stuff or we believe in our creator, we believe in this oneness and this philosophy of like coming together in, in our hearts and our minds, then wouldn't it be interesting that every person's different perspective, and if we get more curious to it, then we can actually start seeing the philosophy of our creator through the eyes of every different person and embrace those different philosophies so that ultimately we become the creator. You know, like so cool to me, so cool. you know? So cool, but we can create anything, right? Once we realize that the power of intention, as long as we understand, like, that when we intend things, like even if you look back, like not to sound too weird and spiritual, but like before we were a body, we were an embryo. Before we were an embryo, we were a seed. Before we were a seed, we were a formless energy, right? And essentially, our dad had an intention with formless energy and put something in our mom and we were created. So it's no different than what we want to do in the world. It's all about intention and creation. And once we realize that, like you just attested to, there's literally nothing that we can't create. We just have to block out that interference. Exactly. And here's the thing. The, 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 again, going back to the question, you know, people are like, hey, what do you think? You know, and I say, listen, man, like I, I'm trying not to think anymore because the more I think, the less I know, you know, and I really start getting into this place where, you know, you just start to feel. And I really believe that, that you know, feeling has been what has guided me. How do you feel about that, actually? Because I think, I'm, you know, I, I'm confident that over the last 12, 18 months, you've been guided by something greater, right? Yeah. And, you know, which, which is why. So what was the feeling that you had that was like, hold on a second, you know, like my mind's telling me this, but my, my, my body is actually telling me this. And as a result, you started going through it and your, your, your mind started following through is there anything that you can describe? It's just, yes, you're not wrong. Like I have felt guided ever since I stepped into the CLS stuff, but even more specifically, like even when I started it, I knew it was for something much bigger than Craig Siegel will, will ever be able to accomplish, right? It was an impact, kind of like a symbol. Like if you're familiar with Batman, like the bat symbol, what does that represent? It represents that Gotham City is protected by Batman. Like I wanted CLS to represent inspiration and support and then everybody can do it and so forth. And, but to be honest with you, during that journey, yes, I felt guided from the beginning. That's why I pivoted from Wall Street and so forth. But really like the last three or four months when the tumor situation happened and I really started buying into the fact that we are all energy and understanding the quantum and stuff like that. That's when I, when I really started to feel and understand that I'm being guided and like, you know, it's just, I hear, I speak to God like straight up and, and like, I, I hear him very, very clearly. Like I, I'm following the path now and it's all happening. And it, it's, it's tough to explain if I'm being honest with you, but more specifically the spiritual journey over the last few months, it, it's really opened my eyes and stuff. And it, it, the coolest thing about it is it's like, Yes, I'm doing this for a bigger reason than just me. But at the same time, it's like there's literally nothing that we can't create. I love it. So tell me the bigger reason, like where do you see yourself in the next, like if I could paint you like the biggest or you could paint me a picture, you know, like where does CLS stand for in the next, you know, 12, 12 months to, to, to you know, 10 years, you know, like where, 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 like no limit, because I yeah. think that, I think people, and the reason I'm asking this question is because I think people need to understand how big of a vision 
men and women like us really have. Yeah. You know, like, like this is really important. 100%. And one of my favorite movies, The Greatest Showman, T.T. Barnum talks about how everyone is only limited by their imagination or so forth, mm -hmm. right? And, and so, look, the, what we've accomplished in the last year, I say very humbly, I just made a post about it yesterday, basically trying to inspire everyone saying, I, I said yes a year ago. A year ago, I didn't have any of these things. I named all the things we've been able to accomplish in such a short time. One of the biggest podcasts on the planet, keynote speak, all of it, right? TV appearances, all this stuff. So, you know, I, look, you don't have to tell me to think big, brother. I think so big that it's weird, but I yeah, think you got it, it, right? You have... You have to be so optimistic because look, there's an old expression. It's something along the lines of if you aim for the stars and come up short, you'll land on the moon or it might be the other way around. But the point yeah. is, is I think really big. So I didn't do this to just like take part. You know, I, I did this to really make a gigantic impact in the world and inspire billions and, and really help people. And it's caught fire. People are sharing it. We just started our membership. We have 160 people in that in just two months. So it's really growing. So look, make a long story short, I see us with the number one podcast on the planet. I see us as the most sought after keynote speaker, inspiring people at Wembley Stadium, 100,000 strong at a time. Um, just coaching my membership had literally has thousands of people in it and so forth, just to continue to, to extend our reach. So more Beautiful. people are impacted every single day and feel the positive energy and want to take positive action. There's literally no limits. No limits, infinite. Do you feel like, um, <clears throat> cause I think that, you know, for myself, there's so many times where I, I feel like, you know, I'm an imposter, you know, like I have these fears, like, wow, am I really thinking like crazy? And, you know, I have these, you know, big visions of really bringing the world's leaders together and really catapulting this more compassionate leadership philosophy of really helping people see that, you know, like how can we bring world leaders together to really admire each other's, you know, not, not really focus so much on what religion you are or what faith you have, but just knowing that you have a greater faith, which is ultimately, you know, our like the heart, right? Like let's focus on like love. So like this 100%. is to me, and if we can have more compassion and leadership, you know, like I see this sometimes, but of course, you know, there's moments where I'm just like, wow, like, am I, am I like really fucking crazy that like, I really think that I can do this. You know, there's moments where I feel like an imposter or like if I speak up and people don't resonate with what I'm saying, you know, I, I can get like actually, you know, sad or, or, or uncertain. And I, and I really like go through these internal journeys with myself and I'm very like, you know, like, I have a lot of courage and I have a lot of stamina and I have a lot of resilience, which is why this, you know, the Resilient Minds podcast, but it still happens to me. You know what I mean? Like it's, I'm still fucking human, you know? And so I'm curious to know, is this something that happens for you as well? Or is this just like, you know, kind of a. So, so look, I think, first of all, thank you for being so vulnerable and diving deep and pulling back the curtain and being just honest. And I appreciate that brother. Everybody at some point has imposter syndrome, especially when they're a beginner at something, right? So I had a moment of imposter syndrome when I started CLS. I said, who's going to want to listen to me and so forth? But then I understood it was just a voice in my head. It was just a negative thought. And I replaced it with, well, I did start two businesses. I did run a bunch of marathons after not being able to run a mile. So I do have a story to tell. And I just have a ton of self-belief because I put in the work. You know what I'm saying? I prep for everything. Like, I did my homework on you. I wanted to give this conversation the respect it deserves. I'm just so organized and so structured. And I give this thing everything I got. And I can live with that. So look, as far as haters go and stuff like that, they're always going to be around, brother. You can't stop and throw stones at every dog that barks or else you'll never go forward. So I keep doing my thing. I keep learning every single day. I'm getting new content so I can help the audience with, right? Like all this quantum stuff and stuff like that. And I just keep moving the chains and keep looking to make a bigger and bigger impact. And to sh quite frankly, like, I just don't have time to second guess myself. There's not enough time here on earth. Like, I want to make every second count. 
I want to be so present with you. I don't know if we'll ever have the opportunity to speak again. Hopefully we will, of course, but I don't know what tomorrow will make it brings. Happen. It'll work out. You know, yeah. like we'll, we'll be somewhere on the circuit. <laughs> but I'm just, yes, you're right. But I'm just saying, I don't know what tomorrow brings. So I give everything I got to every moment. I'm super present and aware and mindful. And I just don't have time to second guess myself. So I just don't, I don't even listen to that particular voice in my head. If it ever shows up for a moment, because I'm human, I just simply replace it with a more empowering thought. And that's it. And do you feel like your ego ever shows up in the capacity? So it's not necessarily the thought, but more about like the egoic perspective of, you know, uh, the masculine that we've, you know, been, been present to or conditioned to, um, or the egoic society that we've been conditioned to that has been, you know, or is that something that you've been able to like totally let go of? Yeah, I, I dealt with it when I got to Tuma, right? Because I was running the Chicago Marathon. I was training for that. And I was talking about it to my audience. Like, I'm going to shock the world. I'm going to do something really special. I'm working really hard. And I learned such a valuable lesson from that whole situation because I was talking from the ego perspective. And then the tumor happened. We got rid of it. And then I ended up running New York City, not for me, to inspire my dad, to raise money for cancer, to inspire. And we ran better than we ever ran. So I learned a huge lesson from just that journey, that story arc in itself. And so, yeah, it has happened to me. Now I'm much more aware of it. And I try to check it at every moment I got to make sure I'm doing the right thing for the right reasons at all times. What do you feel like when it comes to our ego? What do you feel is like something that, um, you know, maybe a positive or a negative, you know, both? Because like personally, you know, my ego has given me a lot of like, like this determination, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, um, also my ego has given me a lot of like this intensity that needs to be powerfully contained, you know, that needs yeah. to be balanced, no pun intended, you know. Um, so like for me, that's been such an important part of my journey is like really calculating how can I really take responsibility for my energy and the people around me so that I'm more aware of not only my own energy, but like how people are sensitive to, 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 the, to the reaction of how I respond or react. And I think, you know, because, or I don't, I, I don't think, I feel <laughs> that this is something that um, needs to be more educated um, in the business realm, in the leadership realm, in the in the in the development field, you know, by being so aware of the fallacies that the ego can actually bring, but also being extremely aware to the strengths that it brings. Thoughts? Yes. This is a great question, brother. And and hopefully I can learn something from you right now, right? Like, for example, I know that people say, don't remove the ego, learn how to work with it. And to be honest with you, I don't know exactly what that means. Maybe you can tell me. Yeah. So to me, when, when people say don't remove the ego, learn how to live with it, it's almost like the contrast, you know? So imagine and imagine the perspective of going to uh, a place where it's extremely sacred, but, but you see a lot of people drinking right or doing something that's like out of ordinary or ordinary in society but like maybe maybe around the corner like there's a there's a sacred ceremony happening right and like oh my goodness these guys should be quiet and stuff and like but understanding that that contrast is actually what allows us to really bring out this light like Listen, you know, when we talk about the prophets, right? Like Jesus, for example, you know, there was there was always the light, the dark, the light in the dark, you know, heaven and hell is within us, right? The kingdom of heaven is within us, you know, like, but also like the depths of hell are within us, you know? So when I was um, a child, child, I was 16, I, I was a drug addict. I was addicted to crack cocaine for three years. And so I lived in hell in that moment, right? Like, because I created it inside of me. Right. It gave me the capacity to now learn that, like, the heart and the heaven inside of me is who I am today. But the biggest thing that I decided is that using 
and understanding the contrast and seeing that all of these capacities of these things that may may see may may, may seep the darkness outside of us that may make it want to come out that's the shit that we have to work on right so the ego actually helps you see what you need to go inside to really capture cata- capture your heart in my perspective of course right that it doesn't mean it's the right thing I actually, yeah. I appreciate the way you articulated it. It's almost like the ego is a flashlight, right? Yeah. Showing you what you need to work on to check yourself. Yes. See, thank you so much, buddy, because I've been, I've been interested right now, like for the last couple of days, because people have been talking about that and you just articulated it very beautifully to me. So thank you for that. And now I have a great understanding of what they mean when they say, don't lose the ego, work within it. Appreciate that, brother. Appreciate you, bro. And, and to me, bro, I just like, this is how we stay in integrity. Our ego can help us stay in integrity. Mm-hmm. Right? Because like you said, and, and the being the flashlight, the ego can be the flashlight that helps you say, hey, no, like, heart, come over here. Come over here. Like, help me, you know, like, be the, you know, and we work in this balance. And I think that this is like a, a really super important part of life and i think that because as you know right we have patterns right and if we have patterns that are showing up in one area of our life though they're 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 bound to show up in some other area of life, right and so this these levels of like ego or integrity or whatever your values are right you now get to recognize these values being showing up in different uh pieces of your life you know whether they're relationships or work or business or you know spirituality whatever the case may be so i guess actually this brings me to a really great question because i'm always curious about this and uh what do you find like what is one of your like top top values that you for your business or your life your relationships think or all of the above yeah, kindness, straight up, brother, kindness. It's funny because everyone talks about gratitude as a superpower in all the ancient spiritual texts, whether you, you do the Torah, the Bible, Kabbalah, whatever the case would be, the one common denominator is always gratitude. But I think maybe an afterthought is kindness, right? How powerful is kindness? It's interesting. When someone performs an act of kindness, it releases serotonin in the body, which is the natural production of happiness and bliss. But here's the kicker. The person who performs the kindness act receives the the serotonin, but also the person that received the kindness act. So kill two birds at one stone. So I think just being kind, brother, like it's a little bit like understated. It's just so powerful and it's such a beautiful thing. And I try my hardest to continue to work on it and just be kind to everybody and everything, whether it be business relationships, anything at all. And have there been like circumstances or situations that like you were, you were challenged in this capacity to bring out your kindness and like you brought it out anyways, it's something maybe you're proud of. Yeah. I'm just working on it. Right. Like it's, we're all a work in progress, so to speak. And, and it's something that I've been really making an effort to do lately. Even if like you disagree with something or someone, right. Or someone pisses you off, like kill them with kindness is an old expression. Like, I just don't allow them to bother me. I'm just kind right back. Uh, I'm not going to like get into it and play the game of he said, she said, whatever the case may be. So just to continue to just be kind and just stay in our lane and keep doing what we're doing, me and you, which is making an impact and and facilitating breakthroughs and energizing people so forth. So maybe not no specific example right now, but just to continue to be kind regardless of like, and again, it goes back to the ego, right? Like you just explained, like, If someone is unkind to us, right? Like the ego is saying to to be unkind back. I see you, ego. I feel you. I check you. Thank you for the flashlight. I'm going to choose resistance. And I'm just going to throw an act of kindness back and keep doing what I was doing. You know, uh, I, I, I love it. I think it's so powerful because that's exactly like the philosophy. My only, my only shift is my word is compassion. Yes. And so my word compassion allows me to like focus, like it's the same, it's the same philosophy. It's just a different word. And so it's the same thing. It's so important to have compassion, right? Compassionate leadership, right? And being able to like come from this space 
So I'm curious to know with that, with, with that shift in that word, what does, what do you think, what does compassionate leadership mean to you? Because I think that everybody has a different perspective on it. I think one of the reasons why the brand has exploded so much, and this is based upon everyone's feedback and testimonials and, and so forth. It's just, everyone says that I'm so compassionate and empathetic, right? The CLS experience is a personal experience. Like I make a conscious effort to engage with the audience as best as I can. There's not enough time in the day, but like I respond to every comment to, to an extent until, you know, I just don't have time. My team will take care of the rest, but I always try to just, be empathetic, understand where people are coming from, right? Because that's that's how you really command leadership. It's not follow me, it's come with me, right? We're, yeah. we're in this together, so to speak. So being compassionate and being empathetic are two really powerful traits and it makes you so relatable and it makes people gravitate towards you. Do you think that, first of all, I totally agree. And I think that's like so beautiful the way that you you described it. Um, what do you think, um, how can some of our current leadership in the world right now be more compassionate? Is there, is there things that you feel in this time, you know, time in the world where we can have, they can have more compassion or we could have more compassion as people to each other. Is there, is there a way that we can lead this kind of like craziness in the world uh, in a more compassionate way, in your perspective? You know what it is, brother? Everyone has an opinion these days, like with politics and stuff like that. And it's something that I choose to not participate in. I just kind of stay in my lane. I have, you know, I have my opinions and so forth, but I don't have time for like confrontation, stuff like that. I think everyone just needs to do a better job of being compassionate. That everybody has their own views, right? Like everybody feels some type of way about something. It doesn't mean that anyone's wrong or right. It just is. And everyone's entitled to their own opinions and people just need to respect that. Exactly. Exactly. And that's compassion, by the way. That's correct. Not a You know, like it, 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 it's interesting because it doesn't matter what the fuck the topic is, right? <laughs> It doesn't matter what the, you know, what belief system it is. It doesn't matter if, if, as long as you're coming from a place of goodness, kindness, and love, you can be, you know, you know, obviously if somebody, you know, is, is out there murdering people, you know, there's a different perspective, but you can still sure. have compassion for the pain that they're going through. And so ultimately everybody's fear. And we talked about this briefly earlier is like death. Right. And if, People are scared of death. Well, you know, we were all there at some point and somehow in some capacity. So what can we do to like lean in more into faith, into this like heart centered compassion? And I think, you know, you really nailed it is like, you know, at the end of the day, it just is. And, and everyone's going to have their opinions and honoring that is really honor, how you yeah. honor yourself. Yeah. hundred percent, buddy. You got to honor that. And if everyone just had that mentality a lot less competition right there'd be a lot less like bullshit for lack of better words and you know what the coolest thing is bro tell me people make confrontation it, like it needs to be like a confrontation you know like it could be such a loving conversation you know like you and me can disagree but we can still be in such beautiful rapport because we honor each other, because we are able to communicate in a beautiful capacity, because we have compassion for each other's opinions. Wow, 100%. what a concept. What a concept, you know, like. That was beautiful. People, I think, in this world are, are needing a philosophy more in, in this, this type of leadership. And I think, I don't think I feel, See, I keep catching myself. Um, I feel like it's important for us to, to really lead that, that way as, you know, leaders in the world, like leaders that are doing beautiful things and in, in really helping um, individuals break their limitations. I feel like this is really important for us to, to, to you know, speak of, of and share. 100%, brother. If everyone can just understand it, that, that's like kind of checking the ego, right? Acknowledging, I see you, I feel you. I'm not going to lead with the ego, right? I'm going to work with it. 
then we can all get on the same page. I know it's easier said than done, but that's exactly why me and you are here, right? Serving and spreading that light and so forth. So that's the beauty of this conversation because it's going to touch many, many lives. And that's all we can do. It's what it's all about. So brother, tell, tell us about a little bit about um, a little bit further into CLS. I'd love to know, you know, what, what's like, if somebody is curious to know more about CLS, what you're up to, you know, how they can get be more involved. I'd yes. love for people to get curious about that, or at least know, know who to reach out to and how to connect. Yeah. So anywhere you listen to podcasts, the CLS experience, we have one of the top podcasts on the planet. Some of the world's greats, Rob Deerdeck, John Asaroff from The Secret, Ed Milet. Everyone's been a guest on there, and we dive deep. We talk about really cool topics. CLS experience on Facebook. We have a private Facebook group. Also on Instagram, at Craig Siegel underscore CLS. It's probably where I hang out the most. If you want to join our free texting community, Everyday Inspiration, text the number 917-634-3796. And what I'm most passionate about right now, brother, is the CLS membership. We, our community is, is growing so rapidly and it's such good people and good energy and good vibes. I wanted to give back. So I created a monthly subscription. It's inexpensive. It's weekly Zooms. We talk about all stuff like this, removing living beliefs. I also bring on guest speakers from the podcast. People you typically have to pay 50 grand to come speak will come in for free. But where all the magic happens, we have a private group in chat. Right now there's 160 people in it. We just started it. It's, it's not a community, it's a family. Someone posts something on social media, everyone attacks it with love, support, engagement. People are becoming each other's clients in there, forming relationships, people are even dating. It's the, it's the coolest thing going on right now, the CLS membership. It's a monthly subscription. You can find it on the website, cultivatelastingsymphony.com. And that's really what I'm most excited about right now. And obviously the speaking engagements and all that, and a lot of big surprises to come. We have a weekly show on Instagram every Saturday with Dave Meltzer called The Paradigm Shift which just got picked up by Apple TV. So I'm kind of all over the place right now. You can't miss me. <laughs> I love it. Dave, Dave, Dave's a great, uh, I remember when I started my podcast, bro, uh, he was like one of my first guests. Yeah. Like, like, like super early on. It was, and his focus was just love, 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 you know, like love, love, yeah. love. But thank you for sharing this. I make sure that all of, uh, you know, the links, everything that you're sharing is going to be put on the show notes. And uh, yeah, dude, I think that, um, you know, what you're up to is obviously, you know, super inspiring. People are, people are, you know, shifting, you're, you're helping people's lives. It's, it's an amazing that people are starting to date in the community because that means more conscious relationships, more beautiful relationships. And what's, what's coming up for you in the next, you know, are you traveling lots or are you, are you just chilling in the big apple? What's the plan? So I got a big speaking engagement in Atlanta, Georgia in January. I'll be a keynote speaker along the lines with Anthony Trucks, Dave Meltzer, John Maxwell, Jesse Itzler, which so that's going to be pretty cool. Um, we have some big surprises. We're going to be start doing CLS events soon. I think maybe around February and so forth. That'll probably be the first one in New York. But yeah, a lot of traveling going forward. I'll be around. And, and look, brother, I'm just going to put this intention out there to the universe. You and I got to meet at some point, no matter where it is. I look forward to it, brother. I really do. You know, I, um, I've been working on getting my U.S. travel waiver to uh, the U.S. Because yeah. when I was 16 or 19, I got charged with uh, uh, trafficking, uh, possession for the purpose of trafficking. You know, I was selling and, uh, you know, I was using. So, you know, I got charged. And it, this has been like 15 years ago. And uh the U.S. government really doesn't like me, apparently. I tried three times, you know, they, they denied me multiple times. But you know what? Fourth time is a charm. We'll make it work, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, just keeping in my prayers. But absolutely, if it's not in the U.S., it's a, it'll be outside of the U.S. And uh, please, at the event, give, uh, you know, Anthony and Dave my, my love. Um, I know those two beautiful souls. Uh, Jesse, I haven't, I, I know him, but we haven't had the pleasure of meeting and uh, there was one more gentleman. I don't know him. Oh, John Maxwell. No. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know John yet. Yet. So um, yes. please, you know, like it's, it's amazing to see us all, you know, like this circle getting like, like smaller, but bigger. You know what I mean? Like, we're just 100%. like, we're all kind of really bridging each other's worlds. It's a beautiful so, thing. brother. Yeah, dude. Thank you. So thank you again. Um, I have one last question for you. Sure. 
If you had three days left to live, what would you do? I would spend an abundance of time with my, with my blood family, right? My parents, my brother, Mark, and my nephew, Skylar, um, also my girlfriend. And, and I would continue doing what I'm doing, brother. And I would spread the light and be with the CLS community, which is rapidly growing. And although they might not be my blood family, they are my family. And, and I would give away, obviously, all my money to, to a cause, uh, maybe cancer or something like that, because you can't take that to the grave. So just spend a lot of time with my loved ones and continue to spread light because I absolutely love this stuff. And I think that's what's going to make the biggest impact after I'm gone. It's going to leave a legacy is the impact. These types of conversations, which will God willing live forever. Mm. Bless your heart, brother, man. Really amazing to connect with you, dude. Um, yeah, just thank you for your energy. Thank you for what you're up to in the world. And uh, yeah, man, I look forward to connecting. If you're ever in Spain, in Ibiza, you have a, you have a home. You have a home here, brother. Thank you, brother. And, and like I said, this is just the beginning of the relationship. My intuition tells me that. So excited about all the things to come with you. Likewise, dear friend. Don't go anywhere. Any love. Hey, everyone. And thank you so much for listening to The Resilient Minds. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please make sure to go comment and like and follow us on iTunes or Spotify and make sure, please make sure that if you really love this, to share this episode and make sure that you're inviting all your friends to like it as we continue to unfold what the beauty of our minds does. More importantly, how powerful our heart level of intelligence can be when we combine our heart and our brain together. And more importantly, Check out the alignment course that I've created. It's seriously there for you to take advantage of at www.ericbalance.com forward slash alignment. See you on the next show.